getting up at dawn to head towards the loo on my way to Port Soland will save at least an hour and some four to five miles in distance against going south around the outside of the hours. And also, it enables me to start with a favourable tide and more importantly, I'm able to get out of Brighton a couple of hours before either side of low water so I don't run aground at the entrance. Like this, at almost high water on a calm day, it makes it really easy to start my little voyage to Port Solent, deep in the heart of Portsmouth Harbour. Until a week ago, I'd not sailed Golden Haze for almost a year because of Covid. Lou Channel is a simple route through the sandbanks of Selsiebill, and it passes just south of the Mixon and north of the East Cardinal Outer Hours Boy. There are a green and a red buoy marking the western entrance to the loo and the rum line from the marina passage to between these two buoys will keep you clear of all dangers. The first confirmation that you're on track is that to the south you will see the large east cardinal outer hours buoy. By comparison the little green and red channel buoys um, at the entrance, at the um, western entrance, are much smaller and you'll not spot them till you're almost on top of them. For some reason, and you know, perhaps it's a conical shape, the starboard green one is normally easier to spot than the red can boy, which you'll leave to port if you were coming from the Solent towards Brighton. From the two channel boys to Horse Sand Fort is around 10 miles, so with a bit of help from the tide, it's probably only gonna take you a couple of hours. It's important to round this fort, leaving it to starboard, as there's an anti-submarine barrier just below sea level running from the fort all the way to South Sea, and hitting it's not going to do your keel any favours at all. Next ahead is the main big ship channel into Portsmouth Harbour, and it's worth heading towards the next fort, which is Spit Sand Fort, which was home of the Doctor Who sea devils many years ago. Uh, these days I'm more interested in getting the fenders on and my mooring lines laid out. Off to starboard is the unmissable Portsmouth Tower thing stretching up in the air. The hovercraft surprises me as there was, a, as there was one with a gun on the front of it used by the Royal Navy to attack the Sea Devils back in the day. On the port side of the main channel is the small ship's channel in and out of the harbour, which enables small boats like mine to enter this very busy military area without asking permission from port control. As you pass HMS Dolphin on the left, you'll see the big green light ship that marks the entrance to Hasler Marina. And just a little further on is a sign marking Gosport Marina. If you want a berth in either of them, you should call up on channel VHF 80. I've been into them both in the past and they're fine, except outside the gates there's not a lot going on and without a car you're a bit stuck. Every time I see Nelson's flagship, HMS Victory, my heart flutters a bit. And looking off to starboard at our latest flagship, the carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth, capable of carrying 40 aircraft with her protective screen of stealth, stealth destroyers, I feel pretty proud of our senior service. Portsmouth at its best. I really like it. From the main harbour area and just past Gosport, you hang a right and enter the main channel towards Porchester Castle. It's the best part of four miles, so depending on the tide, it's going to take about an hour. Lots of moorings and lots to look at. Shortly after passing the castle, it's probably worth calling Port Solent Arena Control so they know you're on your way and they can prepare the lock for you. I have to say, I'm 
surprised that all three marinas in Portsmouth Harbour operate on VHF 80, so it gets pretty crowded sometimes. Port Solent works on both traffic lights and VHF to allow entry to the lock, and it's a pretty slick operation. There's a very large waiting pontoon to starboard that's easy to up to if you don't want to just stooge around waiting for your turn. It's immediately before the fairly sharp dogleg to starboard you need to take to line up to the dock entrance. As you swing round to starboard, the lock opens up and it's a simple approach. They appear to order the boats in according to size. I was told to go to the front of the dock on the starboard side so that one of the marineros could hand me down all the paperwork and a pass key saying that I could just drop by the office any time to pay. The birth number and a little map was written on the paper so um, I knew I had to go to the far end of the marina. It's never easy to find your berth in a strange marina and Port Solent is a lot bigger than I expected. The gap between the pontoons is not that big, which surprised me slightly, and there was nowhere to get golden haze in bows too. But with no wind and no current, going astern into the berth was not a problem. My main reason for coming here was to collect an order of goodies which would make sailing in the Caribbean more fun. I must say, I, I think this is a really good marina. Of the three premier marinas I've visited so far, this is by far the most boaty one. And it feels like the people here keep their boats here because they actually want to go sailing, they want to go places. And there's all the support facilities to make that possible. Absolutely excellent um, marine trades, everything you need. And it has a nice feel about it. It has a feel, it's much more sophisticated than, I mean, you know, Brighton is Brighton and it's more of a liveaboard marina than anything else. Eastbourne is fine, uh, but the place is full of people as old as me, greyheads. And this one, Port Solent, is absolutely charming. It's got a tremendous mixture of people. The cafes and restaurants are okay, they're a bit chainy, they're a bit the same. But, nonetheless, the food is good. I got excellent Spanish tapas last night. I'm probably going back to the same place again today. And it's a good place to be. Um, I really... If you're going to go to a Premier Marina, I reckon Port Solon is the nicest. And if you could keep your boat here, I think you'd be doing very well indeed. Here we are. Here's Golden Hayes. With her new outboard motor. And she's got a new life raft and a new dinghy. And is all set to go to more exotic places than this. I've crossed the Atlantic a couple of times, but in heavily equipped boats, which Golden Haze is not. So my instinct is to put her on the deck of a ship with a lot of other boats and fly out and join her already in the Caribbean. I have to say of all the marina villages, housing developments around a marina in an out of the way place, Port Solent is by far the most successful. The housing blends in with the boats and it, and it looks nice. It's a pleasant place to be. But. Having spent a couple of days here successfully, having completed the repairs and the discount purchases, I need to fuel up and head out again. At my website, gentlesailing.com, you can find my books about sailing and boats. French Canal Routes to the Mediterranean has sold over 3,000 copies, and the Gentle Sailing Route to the Med, down the Atlantic coast without having to spend a night at sea, has sold over 2,700 copies. The Atlantic Crossing Guide, which I published last year, is being downloaded in amazing numbers, I'm really pleased to say. They're, they're all instant PDF downloads, 
and there's a link to a UK website that can turn them into printed books for around five pounds if that's what you prefer. Gentlesailing.com. About a dozen books there, including guides to the Caribbean and crossing the Pacific. Fairwinds.